Bill Plate from Bad Astronomy here. I am at Space Fest 9 in Tucson, Arizona. I can I can prove it here. Look at this. Check this out. Ooh, speaker. Phil Plate. Space Fest 9, Tucson. And I'm um, having a really good time, actually. There are a lot of astronauts and other astronomers here. It's a pretty cool place. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. What I'm here to talk to you about is a new feature that I'm doing on my newsletter. Now, my newsletter comes out twice a week. Monday is sort of the open public one. And Thursday, I have uh, one for subscribers only. And I'm letting folks there on the Thursday one ask comments or ask questions in the comment section. And then I'll answer them on video and then put them up on the Monday issue uh, the following week something like that. Uh, and I have a question from last week. So let me bring it up here and I can read it to you. And uh, clearly this is going to be fairly low tech for a little while. I'm actually in my hotel room. I'm not even at home. So I'm just going to read this. And it says from Alan Jensen, optimistically, when do you expect actual science coming from JWST? That's the James Webb Space Telescope. And how long from launch to actual telescope time publishing of findings? So what he's asking is, how long is it going to be? Not really from now, but after launch, when James uh, Webb Space Telescope is going to go up into space, how long is it going to be before it's actually observing, astronomers are getting data back, and they actually publish their findings? Well, this is a really good question. It turns out, I have a little bit of experience with this because with Hubble Space Telescope, it was launched and then it was just a couple of weeks later after it was basically run through a, a, a bunch of tests and everything, it, the air had to leave the telescope and they had to turn things on and do all that. And it was a couple of weeks before it started observing and that data were made public. It was a bunch of observations of different things that were of general astronomical interest. And one of them happened to be uh, supernova 1987A, a star that blew up and its light reached us in 1987. And I was on the project that got that data. And even though it was public, that was the data I wound up working on for my PhD. So that was pretty cool. Well, with JWST, this is a, a much bigger telescope and a different telescope than Hubble. It's actually going to go to what's called the L2 Earth-Sun point. And this is a, a point between the Earth and the Sun. And it's going to orbit, really, the Sun. And, and I, can, I can show you this, how this works a little bit. Um, I, again, I'm at a hotel. Not a lot of equipment here. But I have this uh, hotel-free mouthwash bottle cap. That'll be the Earth, like this, right here. Actually, I'll put it right here. And this uh, you know, the little portable travel... Uh, dental floss dispenser. It's, it's what I got, folks. That'll be the sun. So the sun is blue. Earth is black. Let's see if I can do this without destroying everything. And this is, you know what, I'll do it this way. How about that? That's the sun. That's the earth. 150 million kilometers right here. Almost 100 million miles. And for JWST, a red gummy bear. Why red? Because, like I said, it's different than Hubble. It's actually uh, designed to look in the infrared. So that's actually more red than red. You may ask yourself, how much more red could it be? And the answer is none, none more red. And so the Earth goes around the sun, and JWST is going to be like right here. Now, this isn't to scale. To scale, the sun would be that way a long way. But basically, the Earth and JWST go around the sun, and they always stay in a line with the sun. And JWST will have a, a sun shield on this side, blocking the sunlight from interfering with the observations. So there you go, the mouthwash, bottle cap, gummy bear, dental floss dispenser model of how JWST is going to work. But the thing is, that's a million and a half kilometers from the Earth, and it takes a long time to get there. So it's going to launch into space. It's going to move off to this point, and it's going to take about a month to get there, something like that. And on the way, a bunch of stuff is going to happen. It's going to unfold the mirror, and the, another mirror is going to prop into place, and the solar panels will come out. And that'll take three weeks to a month, something like that. Then they're going to have to shake down the telescope. It's going to have to be run through a bunch of tests and all that. It has to be focused, which is hard because it's got a bunch of individual mirrors, which are all aligned to focus the light into the detector, into the telescope itself. So uh, I expect observations will probably start five to six weeks after launch, maybe a little bit more, and um, those will come back probably immediately, and then it'll be taking more observations. Those pictures will be released. NASA's going to want to show that the telescope works, uh, and then astronomers will start working on that data, and that'll be months, actually, most likely before we see the actual science coming out of this. It, it takes a long time. I mean, we have to figure out how the telescope works. It's got to be calibrated correctly. It's, it's going to be hard. And so a lot of this is going to be preliminary. And even then, 
uh, it's going to take weeks and months to write the papers and get them through the refereed process and for them to become public. And what will probably happen is what happened with Hubble and, and most other big observatories like this is all the teams of astronomers will work on all their stuff uh, right away and then release them all at the same time. All these papers will be published in the Astrophysical Journal or some other professional paper uh, journal like that all at the same time. And so there'll be just a whole bunch of different results and everybody will rejoice, uh, hopefully, um, but the question is, when's that going to happen from now? And that's anybody's guess. JWST has been delayed a lot. Now it's going to be, you know, the 2020s before it's launched, 2021, something like that, at least. So we'll just have to wait and see. But once it's up, uh, we won't have to wait more than a couple of months to see the data. Very exciting. So thank you, Alan M. Jensen. I appreciate the comment. And you know what? On, uh, on uh, Thursday, uh, if you subscribe to the newsletter, please leave a comment. Ask me a question, and I will try to answer it more rapidly and with more sophisticated technology than, than this stuff. Hmm.